Want to see some anti-vegan nonsense? Check out this debate featuring Big PP with this total big brain. In terms of the psychological damage of these of these industries, it's irreparable. Also, these industries prevent um, unionization a lot of the time, uh, actively try to subvert worker rights and uh, place workers into a very hazardous and dangerous situation, both for zoonotic diseases and for lacerations, uh, you know, wielding uh, very sharp blades. And then, um, and then this has a negative impact, not only on their psychology, but on their engagement in the community. We see that the size of a slaughterhouse facility in relation to the local population is directly correlated with arrest and report rates uh, for violent crime. So we can genuinely correlate, uh, well, genuinely show that there is a, cor a strong correlation between uh, a meatpacking facility and the size and how many workers are employed and the reports of domestic violence especially. Listen to how insane this is. This guy's advocating that slaughterhouse workers are getting wartime style PTSD and then going home and beating their wives, right? There's a correlation between them and working in the slaughterhouse and it just it causes them so much internal strife that they just have to go home and be abusive towards their spouse. That's nonsense. The reason he says is correlation. He doesn't, there's no proof for any of that. It's, it's complete and total nonsense. Here's the truth. The truth is, is human beings are apex predators. We're at the top of the food chain. We're excellent and we're awesome at killing things. And men tend to enjoy killing things all the time. We do it constantly. I would ask my opponent one, if insects fall under the category of animals to him, should we stop killing insects also? Or would, is it just mammals? Is it just the cute furry ones that you want to stop killing? If, if we or? can avoid killing anything, I'd say we should avoid killing, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So would that include mosquitoes, you know, the number one cause of, uh, of death in most African nations? Should we avoid killing them? Well, it's the rule of double effect. So killing them is to save a life. So no, I think we're justified in take, uh, uh, you know, killing mosquitoes. I think feeding my family saves their lives. And I think that while you can make a good case that uh, a massive factory farming is unethical and most people aren't for that, we're excellent and we're awesome at killing things. And men tend to enjoy killing things all the time uh, that you can locally use local source farms where animals are grown domestically and are cared for <clears throat> with long lives human beings are apex predators and yeah i don't i don't see any problem with consuming them at all i don't see any problem with consuming their byproducts at all also what are you going to do with all of these billions of animals that are domesticated. They can't live in the wild by themselves, man. You can't take, what are you gonna do? You're gonna take a, 180 million chickens and just let them go? Well, I think it's actually close to like, um, I think it's like 20 billion chickens. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> um, I don't care how many it is, you're just gonna let them go? <laughs> well, I, I think the reality is, is that the world's not gonna go vegan overnight and will slowly reduce demand and so supply will slowly drop as well. So the chickens that exist now on the chickens that I'm trying to uh, save, I'm actually trying to prevent many future generations of chicken being born. Uh, and that's the real goal of veganism. But, but many future generations of chickens are most assuredly going to be born if we continue to bore them to eat them, sir. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Meaning, we shouldn't, meaning we shouldn't. Mass, mass farming has produced the most domestic animal life probably ever on planet earth and that is destroying so there's more our, life there's more million life right our, now uh, probably than ever yeah but it's destroying so, our, our our own habitat it's the most irrational way you call us apex predators clearly not rational ones if we take that logic what do you mean like we're destroying what is the habitat of humanity by perpetuating you would destroy it you would destroy it by trying to feed everybody broccoli too man no you wouldn't i mean it's oh, uh, yeah. i think oxford yeah, estimated we, we, we um, got we got to stop interrupting so, yeah okay. sorry sorry you have um to Thank you. Um, Oxford estimated, I think it was, I think it was Oxford. I have to double check the study. It was 70% less land use if we swapped to a plant-based diet and 28% uh, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. For example, we wouldn't need to use, like, think about it like this. It's the trophic pyramid. It's quite basic. The higher up you go on the trophic pyramid, the more energy is wasted in what you consume. So if you're an apex predator, you know, you're, you know, on the top of the food chain and you're consuming animals, which are consuming animals, which are consuming plants, the higher up you go, the more wasted energy there is. And so the bottom of the pyramid actually gets larger. What animals am I consuming that are consuming <clears throat> animals? Well, I, like, most people would consume something like tuna, for example, but the, I guess the, the most, most animals that are consuming just plants, it's still wasted energy. It's just the higher up you go on the trophic pyramid, the worse it gets. You called yourself an apex predator. Typically apex predators, you know, are high, higher and higher. So do you agree we're apex predators then? 
I don't think what Prada does. I don't think that, uh, I think we're outside of the atypical food chain and we've been outside of the atypical food chain ever since, uh, you know, the invention of farming, really. What do you mean? So, so you're saying that our predatory nature went away because we learned how to farm? Well, one, I think you're making claims about human nature that can't be instantiated, that we're predatory. I don't think that... that... We've killed everything we've seen or domesticated it or conquered it for 10,000 years. Oh, God. I think they're going to eat me. I don't know how much longer I have left. Humans used to live in the woods. Humans used to live in many different ways. Uh, they don't live that way now. Humans are capable yeah, so of, what? of intellectual evolution as well as um, physiological, uh, you know, physiological advancements in terms of technology. Are you saying that we've intellectually evolved in 10,000 years to get past our apex predatory positioning? I'm saying that we've evolved in 10,000 <laughs> years ethically to understand oh, ethically. our place. And, that's you know, not, that, well, that's not evolution. You're just saying that society's evolved that way. Yeah, what I'm saying is that in terms of our, um, in terms of ideology, what makes us who we are. It's not determined by our birth, it's determined by our culture and by the way in which we, we think and engage in with reality, the concepts we use. Unless you wanted to instantiate a level of human, like a, a foundational human nature. So so tell me something, uh, just, just out of curiosity. <laughs> what are the food groups that rot your teeth and what are the food groups that don't? The food groups that rot your teeth? Um, well, typically uh, refined carbohydrates. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So does, does meat rot your teeth? No, but... No. Well, so the reason I make this point you is think that's you see, evidence. <laughs> uh, well, because vegans, vegans, there's lots of evidence for the weakness in their bone density. No, there isn't. And this happens over a long period of time eating a vegan diet. Meat eaters don't have that problem. Actually, there's study after study proving that this is so. That aside, no, there isn't. That aside, you would not be naturally attracted to meat to foods that you that were bad for you, that were terrible for you. We're attracted to sugary, salty foods. That's what we're attracted to. And that's what we thrive on. Sugary, Meat salty food. But you just said that sugary foods, you just actually yeah, fruit, contradicted fruit, yourself there. Fruits you are sugary said, foods. So fruit, we're, attra fruit? we're attracted to fruit. Or <laughs> we're attracted to, well, kind of. I'm, I'm actually like the worst person for eating a terrible diet. So Okay, well, right. But I'm just saying, yes, we're attracted to fruit. Okay. Yeah. We're attracted to meats. When you smell meat cooking, you want to eat it. Okay, well, actually, actually I, I mean, like, if you look at it, if like most natural animals don't have to cook meat to, to eat it. Yeah, you got that yummy, yum. Like the fact that we have to cook meat to eat it. We don't have to cook meat to eat it. Well, we, we only kind of do it to avoid parasitic infection. We, uh, yeah, that's right. We only cook it to keep down on the disease. But you can eat raw meat. People eat almost raw steak all young. the time constantly. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt them a bit. Well, it does actually. And if you look at like, for example, the no, it doesn't. no, if you look at the number one causes of death in humanity, and I think this is the better way to look at it. If we take the anthropological evidence, the evidence to say that we're, um, you know, descendant from carnivorous animals is like nonsense. Omnivorous animals, perhaps, but then even, but even then, the majority of, let's say, an ape's diet was like 99% plant-based products, so like frugivores, and that's what, that's our closest, you know, ancestors, like bonobos and other fructivorous animals, have teeth quite similar to ours, eat bananas most of the time. <laughs> that's so, then, it's so ridiculous to um, even say that, man. All how is that of ridiculous? That is, that is most of general our scientific consensus. Okay. In northern environment and did not have access, ready access oh, to no. fruits and plant oh, life. I, I completely agree, but I mean, like, look, like, it depends on how far back on the evolution chain you go when i talk about for example our ancestors in terms of like before homo uh, erectus um then we're going back to the point in which we are you know uh, primates that's like uh, about two hundred and fifty thousand yeah, years ago well i think we're talking about vegan well, what is happening right andrew now. andrew don't make me mute you please because you made you made points that are anthropologically unsound so i'm trying to go through human evolution and explain it to you and explain that human evolution didn't depend upon let's say the consumption of meat and it was probably more of a scarcity issue uh, as you say people in northern northern continents did not have access to, uh, to, let's say, fruits and vegetables. But then, that you know, that's actually pulled into question. So even the fossilized feces of prehistoric man shows 100 grams of fiber in it. Um, um, where do you think fiber comes from? Does it come from animal products? No, it comes no. from plant products. So what, we see, what we're seeing now is that not only did prehistoric man have to have the capabilities and intelligence to trap and uh, cook animals, in the first place, which was, you know, takes a, a level of intellect which would already evolved, but they also had, they also were consuming what we believe it to be tubers and starchy root vegetables as well, which totally ties into the medical evidence of why the majority of our populations are dying from diseases related to the consumption of animal products, inflating cholesterol levels, you know, causing calcification of plaque in our arteries and leading to arth atherosclerosis, dementia, um, heart disease, and uh, even erectile dysfunction.
those are those are problems that are much more concentrated around a vegan diet than a person with a well balanced oh, meat diet. Oh no, friend. they're not. Actually, I mean, oh, like, yeah, if, if that was the case, fertility greatly decreases with veganism. But it, it, no, it doesn't. Actually, if you look, yes, one vegans have higher higher um, free testosterone <laughs> levels. Um, no, they don't. Yes, they do. Yeah, I, I can send you the studies. Prove it. That's false. Okay. It's false. Totally false. Why Completely and totally false. Google it. Go ahead. Show me the it's fertility not... <laughs> differences between meat eaters and, and vegetarians. I don't believe you. I believe that that's a complete and total falsehood. On top of all of that, you can say anthropological evidence showed this in this caveman's diet. It's not proof for what they ate. <clears throat> you can't prove what Homo erectus ate. Well, I, I mean, it actually no is. Way. I mean, it actually is only, proof. If we, you can if we <laughs> only produce fossilized evidence showing this, maybe perhaps theoretically, is what their diet. What we know is well, yeah, <laughs> we have like... ten thousand years. We have ten thousand years of recorded history. We have been eating meat since mankind has penned on paper. Okay, 10, so we've got 10,000 years, years of recorded history and we've been eating yeah. meat and that meat and that for you is enough to determine that we are naturally meat eaters and not in the last 10,000 years well, that is see, a, a, see, a sociological we phenomenon. From, we went from tens of thousands to millions to billions of people and we're all a bunch of carnivorous bastards. We seem to be thriving Well, actually, I mean, if you look, if you look, even in recent times, it wasn't until like the, the average individual didn't have access to, to, to meat in the levels in which we do today. It was a oh, factory farmer in Bernard Matthews, that kind of era, which allowed for that. Uh, and, and mostly people eat like the byproducts of the meat, dairy and egg industry. And this this factory farming that we see today is, is a, is a is a technological i, I don't um, like factory farming we're excellent and we're awesome at killing things and men tend to enjoy killing things all the time but i know I don't you, what you are you proposed to something which is locally sourced hamburger meat i don't know what you're going to do <laughs> locally with, sourced. This, with, okay. with these billions of critters that you're going to release out into the wild critters. i'm not you're, releasing you're anything saying, well, I don't we're know not going to do that about. you're going to gradually keep eating them until people get smart enough that they're going to go to a plant-based diet, essentially. Yeah. That's, that's what your position is, right? Yeah, yeah, that people need to educate themselves on the benefits of a plant-based right. diet. Right, So, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying I'm trying to keep up, man. I'm I sorry. Know. I know it's I difficult. Know. I know. It is. It is difficult. So, uh, like, if I, if I may, I'll explain. So, what? so, so, so no, wait a minute. If I may, I'll just... I'll just uh, I'll just explain. Oh, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, okay. Yeah, so I was just gonna say that one, I, I don't plan on releasing billions of animals into the wild. I don't think that the world's gonna go, you know, vegan overnight. I think that's nonsense. And I think that's like one of the worst arguments uh, against veganism. I think the, the funny thing is, is it's also an argument which tries to say that, well, what about environmental catastrophe? When the environmental catastrophe is actually being perpetuated by having these animals in the first place. As I said, the number one cause of deforestation, ocean dead zones, you know, global warming. And, and then if you look at the medical data in relation to these uh, diseases, we, we can show that it is not, it's not uh, like anything but common scientific consensus to say that meat, dairy and egg products, for example, elevate cholesterol levels and elevated cholesterol levels relate to heart disease and death. And these are the number one, I mean, I mean, dementia is the number one cause in the UK. And I think heart disease is the number one cause in the United States. And these are directly correlated, directly. Heart disease, heart disease is caused in, in this type of thing is caused by complex carbs, complex carbs. What, what makes you want cookies really bad is that you have butter, sugar, and wheat all put together. Those are the things that cause, you can't fill up to death on steak, man. There's no meatitarians out there who are just rampantly dying from heart disease. Do you know? Now, the Sorry. studies that you should read, you should read uh, some, there's, there's good literature on this. Okay. <laughs> Rob Wolf with the Paleolithic diet. Okay. He, he studied this in depth. Lots of people have studied this in depth, including Atkins studied this in depth. There's a lot of scientific literature on this. Not only that, you could right now Google is an egg good for you and you would get 300 different responses. There's no consensus on that. Genius. This is why we refer to the hierarchy of evidence and not random Google search results. Okay, there's never been good consensus on on dietary biology because it's too complicated. Okay, what's good for you in your diet is not necessarily going to be what's good for me in my diet. And saying that a vegan diet is good for everybody is insane. Well, and by the way, why we're why we're on the topic of this? What are you going to do with all the service animals? You know, people rely heavily on service animals, correct? Um, which ones do you mean? Do you mean like guide dogs well, for like, the blind? Uh, uh, let's see, carrier pigeons, 
which are still used fairly consistently in many parts of the world. Who is, who is using carrier pigeons in 21st century? They're still century. used in warfare to this day, sir. Oh, uh, that, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I, I like to think that, that I'm, I really, truly, I mean, if it was necessary, fair enough. But even then, it wouldn't be using them as a means to an but end. But not done have, yet. You're talking about service dogs being a primary, of course. Yeah, that's okay. more likely, though. You're talking about service. You're talking about uh, cats that are used in a domestic process to keep down vermin from all types of different food, including grain, which would be poisoned <laughs> if you allow too much vermin to get around it. What do you do with all of those critters? Are they all sentient beings? And uh, and what we can't uh, we can't have them as pets anymore either. Well, I think it's about the minimization of suffering. That's the that's the thing that you need to consider as well. So if you did have to take a life in order to preserve one's own life, that would be an act of self-defense. And I think that, uh, you know, falls under the understanding of, you know, even the Christian doctrine that exists in the United States today would take that position. It's not that, you know, for example, if someone attacks you, that they have less moral value. It's that when they attack you, they have done th that you when you defend yourself, it is a rule of double effect. You aren't trying to harm them. You're trying to make uh, protect yourself against the, the harm that they are trying to do to you. Tell me how it's unethical to raise cattle free grazed. Okay, so one, you end their life prematurely. Two, the way that, like, so for example, the average uh, cow but they lives have to the, the age life of. To begin with if you weren't raising them to eat them. Yeah, but it's a means to an end. It's like it would be okay to raise a slave. Um, but they're not suffering. Well, they are they're suffering. Not suffering. Actually. Well, I don't. I don't consider hey. animal life equal equal to human life. Well, yeah, but let's answer one like question raising, at a time. It's okay. not like raising a slave. We're doing it again, you guys. Okay. Andrew, Can I answer hey, one? You can ask him a question, let him answer, and, and let's have back, yeah. some back. He did answer. They are I born. Didn't, I didn't answer. I didn't finish. They are born specifically. No. Um, I think that, uh, like, specifically, like they look, are I being, agree. They I agree. Farms I do not, do, I do not disagree. Them. I do not disagree that they are born specifically to be consumed. Mm -hmm. My right. point my point was that it doesn't justify their birth and their exploitation. So when a being is born, let's say someone births someone into slavery. Um, a mm -hmm. father decides, I want five kids to lock in my basement and sexually assault. That, just because they wouldn't okay. have been born, if he didn't, you know, make that conscious decision to exploit them, doesn't justify the exploitation. Because there I'm is sorry, a, sorry, there is a value to that individual separate from his um, and means ends relationship, and this is where you know the the you know the old maxim is um, treat an individual as an end in themselves and not a means to an end. Okay, just I just I'm trying to get clear of the moral equation that you just put forward, saying that somebody who birthed children to sexually assault them is the equivalent of you raising a cattle or a cow to eat it. No, I never that's said the word absurd equivalent. on its face, and it doesn't follow any Christian I doctrine were, at I all. I didn't say the word equivalent. Okay. The, uh, when we're talking about ethically raising an animal, the animal wouldn't exist first and foremost without us raising it for the purpose of consumption. You raise it for a couple of years, you can humanely kill it where it feels absolutely Oxymoron. no pain, and then you can consume it. <clears throat> and the circle of life continues. This so, is a natural phenomenon in nature. So this happens one, constantly. <laughs> um, if I may, um, mm -hmm. I would say that humane slaughter is an oxymoron. Um, you want humanely killing someone if they didn't need to die. So, for example, if I kill someone in their sleep, I'm not humanely killing them. I'm, I, I may be painlessly killing them. It doesn't make it right. Humane implies benevolence and care and compassion, whilst slaughter unnecessarily is what we would classify as murder or at least unjustified killing and is considered wrong and unjust. So it's an oxymoron. It doesn't make sense. It's, that's um, all semantics. Look, it's not semantics. For, it's it's ethics, allow, actually. Would you allow a person who had uh, stage four cancer and was suffering to be put down? Um, if they you saw, if they, if they chose to die, then okay, yes. Gotcha. Okay. But on the other hand, you don't want me to raise a cow ethically and kill it quickly where it feels no pain for the purposes of consuming I think it. Con I, think, I, think, I think comparing a stage four cancer patient and a cow on a farm is somewhat of a dubious comparison. Don't I don't you? think it's any more dubious than comparing sexual predators with. I never, with, uh, I never said that. I never said. I, 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 one, you said that I equated them. I did not. I never said they were doing yes, as wrong. I said that they were committing the same logical engagement with the other, quote unquote, with other individuals. They are using so a being as a means to an end, and that's yeah, and so I that's made that specific. Um, just so you know, that's called a comparison. Just that's so a comparison, just like, but not an equivalence. And there's a difference. So you guys. No contest for the big PP. Total Chad.